let me hold thou, great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land, this barren land, I am weak, but thou art mighty, hold me with thou, powerful hand, bread of heaven, bread Good morning, Epworth. Welcome to Worship for Sunday, May 24th, 2020. I'm Brian Adkins, the Associate Pastor, and I'm glad you're with us today. We have people joining us from across the country and around the world, and I invite you to say hi in the comments section. And if you're a visitor, I invite you to fill out the Connect card that's linked in the comments section. We'd love to have the opportunity to welcome you personally. What would worship be if we didn't have some announcements? So here we go. This afternoon is the second installment of our Shelter in Place Community Concerts. Tune in at four o'clock Pacific time to the Community Concerts Facebook page. You can find the link to that on Epworth's main page, main website, epworthberkeley.org. Like the in-person concerts, admission is free. Donations benefit the Berkeley Food and Housing Project. And a special thanks to our artistic director, Caroline Lee. She's worked really hard to put this together. It was meant to be an in-person series, but, uh, because of the shelter in place we've had to adapt and it's really a ministry for her and she's worked really hard to make this happen so many thanks to caroline we have a new prayer group that has launched on mondays from 7 30 to 8 uh, in the evening uh, mary cavaniero is leading a prayer group on zoom uh, if you have a chance join in there and share your prayer concerns and support those who need prayer uh, it's a good opportunity to connect with others and finally, our interns, Akesa and Jacob, are coming to the end of their internship. Next Sunday will be their last week with us. You're invited to continue to reach out to them personally with messages of gratitude and encouragement. Uh, they're going to participate in next week's virtual coffee hour, which is immediately after service. Um, so we can see their faces one more time before they head off for the summer. 
Uh, and we heard an encouraging message from Jacob last week, and I know we're going to hear something uplifting from Akesa today. Um, so let's prepare our hearts for worship. I invite you to settle into the couch or the armchair or wherever you are. Uh, if you're feeling ambitious, rise as you're willing and able for our invocation and opening hymn. And let's get into worship with joyful hearts. Good morning. During these difficult times, we see people exercising great creativity, uh, doing things like baking bread and cooking exotic meals, photographing various aspects of nature, and developing novel ways of interacting with children. One other activity in which I have noticed a significant increase is in the reading and the writing of poetry. And this makes me think, what is it about poetry that attracts us at difficult times? One commentator on the internet says, we turn to poetry because poetry gives rhythm to silence, light to darkness. In poetry, we find the magic of metaphor, compactness of expression, and simplicity or complexity of meaning in a few lines. So I would like to read a short poem for you today, one that's been all over the all over Facebook and the internet. You may have heard it. Written by Laura Kelly Fanucci, a poet in Minnesota. The poem is entitled, When This Is Over. When this is over, may we never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger, full shelves at the store, Conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, Friday night out, the taste of communion, a routine checkup, the school rush each morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be. We were called to be, we hope to be, and may we stay that way better for each other because of the worst. Amen. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. all to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot give. I will call your name, embracing all your pain. Stand up now, walk and live. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. Today's scripture 
comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14. There follows a second verse, which is also from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice, inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Holy wisdom, holy words. Thanks be to God. Good morning, kids. What are you thankful for today? There are so many things to be thankful for. Our families, our friends, our safety, our health, this big, beautiful world around us. Today I'm feeling very thankful for all of the people at Epworth that serve in the Godly Play program. They share stories with you, help during work time and the feast. They get you ready to bring in the light at the beginning of the worship service. They wash the cups and the napkins we use during the feast. They greet you and pray with you and hold you in their hearts all week long. Today we want to thank them for all the time they spend learning how to share the love of God with you. Their names are Britt, Connie, Jeff, Dana, Doug, Ethan, Laura H., Iril, Karen, Kelly, Laura J., Maylin, Pat, Becky, Stephanie, Tanisha, Sarah, Judy K., Emily, Christina, Clark, Jennifer L., Jennifer K., Caroline, Katie, and Ma An. Thank you all. We appreciate you so much. Let us pray. Creator God, thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you for my family. Thank you, God, for loving me. For each and every child, I pray. And thank you for this special day. Amen. Someday we'll roll away the stone we have carried for so long. All our burdens will be gone, and I can't wait. We will find our way to an understanding of all views. No prayer shall be refused, and I can't Seems that we have gone too far Now we don't know where we are 
I believe I'll find a guiding star And I can't wait If faith is the final place For all fears have been erased All the locks have fallen from the gate I can't wait Someday we'll roll away the stone that we have carried for so long. All our burdens will be gone, and I can't wait. We will find our way to an understanding of all views. No prayer shall be refused, and I can't we will find our way to an understanding of all views. No prayer shall be refused, and I can't wait. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. And not because of me, but in spite of me, let your people hear your words. Amen. In these challenging times, there is a lot of apprehension, worry, and uncertainty that we're having to navigate. And that is in addition to trying to stay safe from attracting COVID-19. In these new days, we are having to cope with losing control of what was our daily routine. We're even making new routines or changing the ones we had. For some, it is the helplessness of the situation that is overwhelming. The isolation of being at home all the time or being at home by ourselves and feeling alone and stuck. For many, it is a domino effect that is impacting their household's financial stability. Truly, these are anxious times. And even as our cities are starting to open up and news reports that the freeways are beginning to see more traffic, we are still uncertain of what is ahead. I am reminded of the Exodus story of the Israelites as they left Egypt after more than 400 years of oppression and slavery. I imagine there was a lot of excitement of the new life ahead, yet there had to be anxiety and uncertainty. They could only take what they could carry. They got to the seashore, and I imagine the growing uneasiness when they didn't see that there was a way forward, yet we know they did. They got across the sea and they know they are free as no one can come from behind. Were they satisfied in knowing that their God, the same God for you and me today, brought them safely after all the plagues and deaths? I imagine, no, actually I know from the Exodus story that the majority wanted to turn back to what they left behind because that was what they knew was comfortable and familiar. They had adopted to their lifestyles in Egypt, even if it was under oppression. They had built a life that was familiar, but through Moses and Aaron, they were challenged to keep pressing forward. They were reminded of what God had in store for them, of a new land filled with many promises. This tension, of the familiarity of the past and anxiety of what's to come or when that will happen reminds me of a story of a migrant family who the grandmother and her granddaughter left their family to travel to the United States in 1971 to seek a new life for the rest of the family. This grandmother named Nana and her granddaughter Kay came and lived in a studio where neither knew the English language nor the land. It was little Kay who picked up the English language quickly, 
and would translate for them. They had to figure out the bus system to travel for necessities and eventually babysitting jobs. Kay recalls the nights when she cried alongside Nana after their evening prayers before bed or after their morning prayers when they got up as that was their daily routine. Kay cried along not because she knew why her Nana was crying, but because she felt her Nana's pain of isolation and loneliness. Years later, as a grown-up, Kay reflected on how she understood that in those tears, her Nana was yearning for her family, for what was familiar, for the life that she had left behind, her own mother and siblings, not knowing how long this liminal space of waiting, praying, sewing would take to bring forth something new for her family. Kay recalls how there had to be moments in those lonely days when Nana was away from her husband and family that she had to have been afraid or questioning their decision for her and this little girl to be the initial seekers. In Genesis 12, 11, we learn how God gave Moses and Aaron instructions on how the Israelites were to dress while eating their Passover meal as part of their preparation for leaving Egypt. They were to eat with their cloaks tucked into their belts, sandals on their feet, and staff in hand. They were not free, and yet, they were to prepare themselves as if they were. God said he would lead them out of Egypt. Their preparation was an act of faith. They would need this faith when they were in that liminal space of leaving Egypt and growing of their faith and courage before getting to the freedom they were seeking in the promised land that was before them. They, like me, when I was considering all the things that cause anxiety, must have felt overwhelmed at the many uncertainties, restrictions, and helplessness that are key stressors. Today's scripture from 1 Peter 4.12 reminds us that we should not be surprised at the ordeal that is taking place amongst us to test us as though something strange is happening to us, that we need not be fearful of being uncomfortable or when sharing and suffering like Christ did. But we do not suffer for doing wrong, but sometimes for doing what is right. First Peter 5, 7 tells us that we are to cast all our anxiety on God who cares for us. Jesus' suffering reminds us that to live the gospel is threatening. The threat to the empire or the power structure of the early church was not that this group of Christians believed Jesus was the son of God or that he rose from the dead. The threat was that Jesus, not Caesar, was Lord. Contrary to the early church who faced hostility today, we are free in the U.S. to practice and live out our faith. But can it be that today's churches have become irrelevant because the gospel message of liberation has been traded for conformity and involvement with or support of the empire or the structures of power and privilege? That maybe more focus should be on correct action and less on correct doctrine to bring about justice? This morning, scripture calls us to be alert and resist giving into our anxieties, the challenges that may seem overwhelming, but to be firm and unwavering in our faith as we are not alone in our struggle because we all struggle together. The Christian faith is not individualistic. No, we are invited to become part of the one body of Christ which is larger than the troubles, successes, and frustrations of any one person. 1 Peter 5.9 reminds us that as Christians who are part of the whole, we are part of the whole. This understanding is part of the larger whole allows us to emphasize and achieve solidarity. 
while the Israelites' previous life was under captivity and oppression and their faith prepared them to walk forward, still they struggled, even when God provided food daily and for all their needs. I am certain they cast their anxieties and prayers to God and yet they struggle with the waiting and uncertainties. They want to change immediately. Sound familiar? In these unprecedented times of great uncertainty and challenges, how are we dealing with anxiety? How are we making room for what is new that is yet to come? Perhaps they return to the basics of the beauty that has always been around us in the lilies of the valley, like the beautiful images from your homes that we have enjoyed over the last 10 weeks in our worship services while we are sheltering in place. Or can it be that the something new is beyond what is comfortable? What will become of your anxieties? With God's leading, my time with you, my dear Epworth family, and my time at the Claremont School of Theology has propelled, actually no, equipped me to evaluate how I use my voice, my time, and resources. I feel a burning in my spirit to evaluate my own privilege and comfort in how I serve. Like you, my husband Dame and I support feeding ministries, health and mental support ministries, those that may not have a home, but just within the comforts of our personal boundaries. But because of you, Epworth, and what I have learned from you, I am challenged to lean into my personal anxieties on social issues of racism that is easy to gloss over, like the senseless killing of Ahmaud Arbery, a 25-year-old young African-American man jogging on his daily run in his Georgia neighborhood in February that took months to get the attention needed to seek justice. Or the recent CNN report that while most of us are staying home, trying to figure out how to work remotely, or worrying about paying bills, Asian Americans are doing all of that while also fearing for their safety. The FBI reported that Chinese and Asian Americans are now experiencing increased hate crimes due to the coronavirus global outbreak. How am I? redirecting my anxieties to speak up and stand up with these brothers and sisters of mine? How am I intentionally challenging myself to move from the comforts of my predominantly inward-facing focus to truly an outward-facing focus as Jesus has modeled for all of us? Remember the story of Nana and Kay? That is my story with my beloved grandmother when she and I first came to the U.S. and landed in Hawaii, where her brother was to help with our immigration papers. I was brought with her because I was not yet in school, and she was my babysitter, and I would keep her company. That was courage to me to bring a small child to a new land. What I learned at her knee was the reminder that with God, all things are possible. Not easy but possible. That she and my papa left the home where they were comfortable and where they would have had their needs met. However, she willingly chose to lean into her anxieties because she and my papa imagine opportunities for us that can only be characterized as visions from a dream. She reminded me that I stand on shoulders who sacrifice greatly that what little I have, I am to share with those behind me. And leading meant serving others in love to honor God. In her quiet yet determined way, she, like you, taught me the importance of seeking justice in forgiving and nonviolent ways. Even though I had to translate for them both, when they became US citizens when I was in junior high, Voting was a privilege they never missed an opportunity to exercise. That period before my papa and the rest of our family moved to the U.S., my nana endured a lot of anxiety, 
but she chose to trust God and look beyond the uncertainty and her own limits to prepare for what is new that awaits ahead. Today, my Papa and Nana's legacy is over a hundred people in number with grands, great-grands, and great-great-grandchildren. While they have both been called home to glory, their remaining children and us, their grandchildren, share with our kids their stories of faith, courage, that no-quit spirit and determination in the face of anxiety, scarcity, and uncertainties to remind them of who they are and where they come from. It is in that spirit of gratitude I thank you, Epworth, for making space in your hearts for me since I came to you last year. Thank you for teaching me each time I was with you in person, by email, text, phone, or by Zoom, to prepare me for what is new that awaits me. Where I have fallen short, I ask you to please forgive me as I forgive you. Please know that I love you, one and all, as I prepare to say goodbye at the end of this month. It has been truly a great blessing for me to be one of your pastoral interns and my sincerest gratitude to Pastor Kristen and Pastor Brian for sharing of their care, leadership, and wisdom. So today, I leave you asking that in spite of the varying range of feelings we experience during these unprecedented times while sheltering in place, please let us not waste these anxieties, but make room for what is new that awaits us. Let us be reminded that with God, all things are possible. Be tenacious to hold on for the prophecy that is ours, liberated and led by the Holy Spirit. God bless and keep you, my dearest Epworth family. Amen. Greetings, Epworth. I'm Jacob Wilbur. I am one of the pastoral interns here. Now I call you all to prayer. It is a time to share your joys and concerns. You may share in the chat and remember to use first names only. And if you need prayer, you can send your prayers to prayer at epworthberkeley.org. And may God hold all these prayers written and spoken aloud and the prayers deep within our hearts. Every time I feel a spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel a spirit the mountain Marlow spoke out of his mouth came fire and smoke Jordan River chilly and cold chilly the body but not the soul every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart I will pray every time I Feel the spirit moving in my heart. I will pray all around me. Look so shine as me, Lord, if all was mine. Ain't but one train run this track. It runs to heaven and runs right back. Oh, every time I spirit moving in my heart I will pray every time I feel a spirit moving in my heart I
Good morning, Epworth. My name is Kim Haraka, and I'm a grateful member of the Epworth community. Would you please join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer? Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When we talk about offering our gifts to God, we sometimes speak about giving gifts in terms of time, talent, and treasure. And this time of staying at home gives us an opportunity to think about our gifts of time, talent, and treasure in new ways. Gifts of time are often connected to gifts of service and presence, but gifts of time can also be the time that we spend in prayer with God. In the coming week, I encourage you to set aside a special time um, to give your time to your relationship with God. When we talk about gifts of talent, we usually think about those unique ways that we show up in the world. But maybe there's also a, a hobby or some way that you've shared God's love in the past that you've laid down that you can pick up and renew during this time as a way to continue to offer love to others. And when we talk about giving gifts of treasure, we're usually thinking about giving financially. But while we're at home, there's no plate that we're passing during Sunday morning worship. And so we invite you to give in new ways to mail a check to the church, 1953 Hopkins Street, Berkeley, California, 94707. Or to give online um, through our website epworthberkeley.org, or maybe give in a new way, setting up a, an auto pay uh, for your pledge or for your, your monthly donation, and you can do that on our website as well. We have a special opportunity this week for the giving of our treasure. We have to say goodbye to our pastoral interns, Akesa and Jacob. Their, their last Sunday with us will be next week, and we want to give them a special farewell gift. We invite you to make a contribution to this gift, either through putting interns in the memo of your check and designating um, a gift, or on the website in the box that says other, uh, you can give in that way. Let us give now with joyful hearts. Lord, keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Keep so busy praising my Jesus. Ain't got time to die. Cause when I'm healing the sick, I'm praising my Jesus. When I'm healing the sick, I'm praising my Jesus. When I'm healing the sick, I'm praising my Jesus. Ain't got time to die. Cause it takes all my time. Keep so busy serving 
my master. He's so busy serving my master. Cause when I'm giving my all, when I'm giving my all, when I'm giving my all, pray with me please as we offer our time talent and treasures to you O oh God may they be used to pass on the promise of hope peace of life of community to all in need of your gifts and presence in their lives amen When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who rulest wind and water, stand by me. In the of tribulation stand by me in the midst of tribulation stand by me when the host of hell assail and my strength begins to fail thou who never lost a battle stand by me in the midst of faults and failures, stand by me. In the midst of faults and failures, stand by me. When I've done the best I can, and my friends misunderstand, Thou who knowest all about me, stand by me. In the midst of persecution, stand by me. In the midst of persecution, stand by me. When my foes in war array undertake to stop my way, thou who saveth Paul and Silas, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When my life becomes a burden and I'm nearing chilly Jordan, oh thou lily of the valley, stand by me. Behind me is my front door, and I do not know what I'll find each time I open this door. But I praise God for the promise of a future for us all, regardless of these unprecedented and anxious times. Therefore, go forth in peace. Live as free people of Christ. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all as we look forward to what is new that awaits. Amen.